Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com and Weiss Advice here on YouTube. This is going to be a feature product video. I did a video a while back about paid endorsements, talking about when I do product feature videos, I'm going to be asking for money in the future. This is going to be one of the rare exceptions. This is a plugin from a startup company. This is their first plugin from JD Factory called Room Widener. And because they're a startup company, they're very small, I decided that I like this product quite a bit. I'm going to showcase it for no charge. Uh, it's a really, really cool plugin, not because it's doing anything like groundbreakingly unique, but because it's such a convenient workflow plugin, it allows me to start doing things that are, it's a technique that I know and I know of and has existed for a long time, but I almost have never incorporated into my mixes because it's such a pain to set up in terms of workflow. And now I think that it's gonna be in a lot of my mixes because it's really cool and it's something I've been ignoring. So what I wanna do is I wanna play this little synth section here. And uh, there we go and uh, play it without, and then play it with, and then explain what this plugin is doing and why it's really cool to have in the arsenal. All right, let's check it out. All right, nice kind of 80s sound and synth layers. Very cool. Let's put on Room Widener here. Now I'm going to play it without and I'm going to turn it on in the middle. So it's it's really cool what it's doing. It's subtle but it's not. And I'm going to play it now in the context of the mix and we're going to hear that just this stereo stereo imaging that we're getting here takes these synths and actually like it finishes what they need to be in the mix like it that is all that needs to happen to this sound for it to really glue into the mix really well check this out Sounds good, not bad, a little thin maybe. Here's with Room Widener. You can't tell me those synths don't sound perfect now. They sound great. So what is Room Widener doing? Well, it is doing exactly what it sounds like it's doing. It's widening the dimension of, of the sound. Now, there's a number of ways to widen a sound. I think the most common way, and probably the way that I've done it the most, is by using some kind of a stereo imager, or occasionally by using like a Haas split or something like that. The issue with using a stereo imager is that inherently you're going to cause phase problems. You're stretching out the side image, which is an out of phase image. And so when it folds back into mono, it's going to thin the sound out and over stereo widening things using imagers and things like that can really mess with the way it sounds when it collapses to mono. Now, sometimes that's an issue, sometimes it's not. An alternate way of widening a space is by using a series of delays that pan in different directions and then using some kind of comb filtering in order to help spread those delays apart. I'm not exactly sure what the mechanism is under the hood here of Room Widener, but I think it's something to that extent. Now, there are pros and cons to this as well. The the pro to this is that the monofold is absolutely perfect. It sounds great. The con to this is that when you use particularly long delays, relatively speaking, the anything that has a heavy transient is going to kind of get a little bit of like a flutter effect or like a little tiny bit of a slapback effect. And I'm talking about like super, super subtle because the delays are usually very short, but you will hear that kind of action happen in the transients. 
So it really does depend on your source. Now with these synths, we don't really have a lot of transient action going on. It's a very smooth sound. So this is like a perfect use for this. And if you really listen, you can hear a little bit of that transient flutter, but in the context of a mix, you really don't notice it at all. And part of the reason why we're hearing that bit of transient flutter is also because of this size control. The size control is determining the spacing of the delays, the, the speed of the delays, effectively. Larger sounding spaces are going to have delays and echoes that come back later in time than tighter spaces, right? But I want this to be a really wide separation, so because this element is already very smooth and it's already kind of tucked it's a supporting element I don't mind having that little bit of extra flutter uh, the other thing is I've got the amount turned almost all the way up uh, because I really want this to stretch out but there's one other kind of control here that I think is really neat and that's this dampen control this kind of functions the same way as like the damp control on a reverb where you can get the high end to decay out faster than the low end and one of the things that's really nice about having this right here is not only are we getting this effect, but we can also kind of control the tone of it. And one thing that I want you to notice is that when I bring this in, it not only is going to widen the image, but it's also going to warm the image, which I think is really, really cool. Like it kind of puts this like warm glow spread over the synths and it just makes it sound really perfect. Now, can you do this on your own? Yeah, you could set up a couple of auxes, you could configure some delays, you could set up some comb filters on those auxes and you could have a bus for that and send the synths to that bus or whatever. But each one of these is configured slightly differently. You know, oh well, eh, they're pretty similar here actually, but I have a bunch of other elements where I'm using this. So I have like an electric guitar where I'm using it specifically on the reverb of the electric guitar and it's different settings here. I've got a different amount. I've got different dampening right here. The dampen is turned down to like nothing basically because it's keeping it bright. Uh, I've got it on another reverb return over here, which is a copy of that. So that would be another bus setting this up. And then I've got it on my snare reverb as well. It's actually, it's just the snare, a, a layer snare that has a lot of reverb, but here it's completely different settings, right? I've got the size as small. I've got the dampen down at 22.7%. Uh, so in order to do this, I would have to create like probably like seven or eight, like probably like eight aux returns to do this in total, or like four stereo aux returns, and then use uh, uh, dual mono configurations for the delays and comb filters and everything like that. And because of that workflow issue, I almost never use this technique. It's a great technique, actually, but it's a pain to set up. And so while I do it from time to time, I tend to do it on elements that only really call for it. And I tend to ignore certain things where it it is it would be useful and nice and would just improve it ever so slightly, but doesn't like necessarily call for it. Like this snare, for example, this layer snare. So I've got my main snare here. And then I've got a layer snare. So this layer snare has this big plate sound on it. I want to spread that out, make it a little bit more dramatic, make it a little bit more 80s, you know what I mean? So pop this on. And it just widens it out ever so slightly. Now, is this a dramatic change? No, it's a very slight improvement. It's something I probably wouldn't take the time to create the auxes needed to design this sort of crossing delay comb filter combo that's going on here. And even if I did, I would have to tune it to do what, do it as well as this plugin is doing it too. So it would take a lot of time and I probably just wouldn't. In fact, I know I wouldn't because I don't. But when I have just this plugin that can make me do this technique without having to set up a bunch of extra work, now suddenly I'm doing it on a bunch of stuff.
So I'm using it to widen it out a little bit, brighten it up a little bit, subtle change, makes it a little smoother, not dramatic, not something I would normally take time with. Uh, same thing with this guitar right here. So let's grab this guitar. I have a little bit of space already on there. All right, you can hear a little bit of air in the capture. I'm adding an additional bit of reverb just to give it a little more dimension. And I would probably normally stop there, but because I've got this plugin, just giving it a little bit more breathing room. Same thing over here, got another guitar. Kind of dry, setting up a nice little rhythmic delay on it. Putting a little reverb on that delay. And again, normally that's probably where I would stop, but a little room widener. So it allows me to do all these little subtle improvements to the stereo image that I would normally be ignoring. And I love that now I can do that without having to go through a million extra steps just for like a 5% improvement. It's just giving me that 5% improvement immediately. But if I do this on a bunch of places where it really calls for this improvement, it ends up actually making a pretty significant difference. All right, so uh, I love this plugin, really happy to have it. It's going to show up probably a lot in my mixes uh, because it's allowing me to do a technique that I normally ignore. And I love that. I think that's that's amazing. Uh, cool. Let's wrap up here. If you dig this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification so you get notified. And lastly, you know what we say here at Weiss Advice. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.